We're here at the Daytrim booth at VeeamOn 2018 in Chicago. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at VeeamOn? Yeah, Brian, thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. My name is Clint Wyckoff, and I'm a solutions engineer here at Daytrim. And as you mentioned, we're here sponsoring VeeamOn 2018 in Chicago. You know, a little bit about the company. So Daytrim was founded back in 2012. Uh, really focused on solving several key customer challenges around tier one performance of their mission critical virtual machines, being able to provide kind of built-in backup capabilities as well as integration with the cloud. Um, that's the direction that we're seeing most customers looking to go towards and they're even considering looking at AWS public cloud as well. So Daytream allows you from a customer to bring your own servers. We don't have any sort of strict hardware compatibility list that you need to abide by like some of the legacy HCI guys out there. Um, and we're, we, we basically store all of your data on a persistent data node, a scale out storage pool, um, which allows you to scale performance independent from capacity. It really makes lives a lot easier for, for customers. Great, um, and is it possible for us to take a look at you know, what you're showing here at the booth? Yeah, definitely, let's take a look at a demo. So what are you going to show us? Yeah, Brian, so we're going to take a look at the Daytrim UI and how it would plug into your existing VMware environment and allow you to manage virtual machines and quit having to worry about managing LUNs and volumes and RAID groups. Great. So here we can see the main Daytrim user interface. So part of the out-of-box experience for Daytrim is you get asked what's your VM or your vCenter information. So with that, we install our Daytrim DVX plugin, which is an HTML5 based plugin um, that goes straight into the VMware environment. So here we can see on the summary, you know, some very high level information about performance, throughput, latency as it's seen by the individual VM, both read and write. So if we kind of think back some of the, the things that we mentioned a little bit earlier with tier one performance. Now that's made up of not only IO throughput, those types of metrics, but it also from an application is how fast is it responding? So we want to make sure that this latency is as, as low as possible. That allows you to virtualize more of those mission critical apps and services and things. So whenever we look at some of the performance information that we're gathering here, we'll be able to drill in and see kind of hot spots across the environment. So instead of worrying about, like I mentioned, managing LUNs and volumes, we can drill in and see specifically across the board everything that's going on inside of my Daytrium infrastructure. So we can come down in here and we can see you know, performance information, we can see replication, we can see latency. Uh, here's a little peek down here. Once I click, you'll see the context on the right-hand side completely changes. So we can come down and we can see at an individual host by host or virtual machine by virtual machine basis, what's the performance look like? I kind of think of this as like the iTunes scrubber whenever you're kind of zooming across the song. Right. Yep. It makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. Um, out of the box, we store 365 days worth of performance information for the entire environment. Um, so that's, that's what we got going on there. Now if we kind of look behind the scenes, we have a data node. This is responsible for holding the erasure coded RF3 persistent copy of your data. This scales out independent of the performance as I mentioned. Um, you know, one of the cool things you can come down here and we'll even show you, you know, what the, uh, what the fan speed looks like on your, on your power supply. That's the type of information that we're gathering here. Or if you want to zoom in and say, you know, hey, this is what it looks like on the backside. It's a very durable um, architecture, active passive controller, dual power supply configuration. Um, pretty cool there. Now, really what sets us apart is the fact that we're shifting that controller bottleneck, what legacy SAN has, and we're moving this up to an individual host level because pretty much every VMware environment has idle CPU sockets or cores that are available. So what if we're able to use that for storage I.O. processing? So if we come back over here to the screen really quick, we have two different modes that we operate in. We have fast mode, and we also have insane mode. So fast mode will use up to 20% of the available CPU cores on a host. Insane mode will use 40%. So right now I'm cruising around 40,000 IOPS. Let me kick this back down to fast. You'll see this performance go from 40,000 IOPS down to around 12, 15,000. Literally just with the click of a button. Switching there, so now you can see I went down to 15,000. Okay, well, let's say we need to go back again. Literally, just by clicking that insane mode button, 
will go from 12,159 IOPS up to 40,000. And this is at a host level. So if we kind of look at the configuration of my host, yeah, this is a, basically it's a Dell R630 that we OEM. We call it a Datrium compute node. Whenever we look at the configuration of this, storage devices, I do have local flash inside of this host. So all of my IO processing, 100% of the time is serviced locally from flash. That makes each one of my compute nodes inside of my cluster completely stateless. I mentioned earlier on that we have um, an open architecture. We call it open converged. Okay, so that lets customers bring any servers. It could be HP, it could be Dell, it could be Lenovo, Cisco, UCS. We don't really care. Throw some flash inside of them, we install our hyperdriver, and that's literally all you need. Great. So in a nutshell, that's what we're here showing off, kind of really just quickly wrapping it up. We do have some special cool things that we do with Veeam. The fact that we're doing all of our I.O. 100%, the fact that we're doing all of our I.O. 100% of the time from flash makes backups blazingly fast. Here you can see I had an active full backup cruising along at about 900 meg a second. That's pretty good for a Veeam backup if you ask me. Um, if you want to learn more about this and how we integrate with Veeam, you can actually go out to this bit.ly right here. I wrote a reference uh, framework document that highlights exactly how to plug Veeam and Datrium into an environment together. Um, so this is Clint. We're at, da at the Datrium booth number um, 503 here at Veeamon 2018. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Great. Thanks for taking the time to speak with Veeam blog. Awesome.